Oh my gosh, let's talk about Ava Zeisel, the Hungarian Jewish ceramics designer that had a 75 year long groundbreaking career, who was imprisoned by Stalin and wrote some anti racist American history. As a young woman in Budapest, she apprenticed for the last master potter of the Hungarian craft guild system. It's important to note that ceramics in Hungarian culture are a very big deal. And the Zsolné factory in Pécs, Hungary, was a huge innovator in the world of ceramics. Zeisel often took traditional Hungarian ornamental designs and incorporated it into her modern work. She lived in Germany for a while and made a lot of really cool colorful things there. Bauhaus and Werkbund were flourishing at the time. And she noted that most modernist design to her seemed very cold and unfriendly. And she would do a lot to change that. But first, she went to Russia. She worked for five years in the USSR, rising to become the artistic director of the Russia, China, and Glass Trust. To emphasize how big of a deal this was, she said Stalin wanted every Russian peasant to have a cup and a bowl, and I designed them. But plot twist, Stalin actually falsely accused her of an assassination attempt. She spent 16 months in prison and 12 of them under solitary confinement. She was released, she was like, I gotta get out of here, and she went to Vienna. Then World War II came, and then she was like, I gotta get out of here, and she went to England. Then she came to New York, where she stayed. And she did the first one-woman show at the Museum of Modern Art, and became a really well-respected designer and traveled the world for her design. She became especially known for introducing warmth, and feeling, and character, and fun. One of her best-known designs are the salt and pepper shakers from the Town & Country set, which are designed to look like a mother and child. Here's Ava and her daughter in the same pose. She also made a lot of pieces that looked a lot like birds and even pieces that looked like belly buttons. Curves were enormously important to her work. She said, I don't create angular things. I'm more of a circular person. It's more my character. Even the air between my hands is round. But one thing I love about her too is that she was in touch with social issues at the time. Between 1965 and 1982, she focused on historical research, anti-Vietnam War protests and peace activism. And she did original historical research on the New York Conspiracy, which was a series of forced confession staged trials falsely accusing and unaliving enslaved people in New York City in 1740s for what was actually unrelated arson. She traveled to libraries around the UK, US, mainland Europe, and the West Indies, finding firsthand accounts that showed the innocence of the people that are accused, emphasizing what was actually racial violence under the American government. And she was drawn to this through parallels that she saw with the show trials that she had witnessed and had been under, under Stalin's regime. I don't know about you, but I find this pretty fascinating. Something else I love about her is the way that she talks about things. Of course, her big book is on design on the magic language of things. You can see in the way that she holds these objects that they're more than simply objects. They are pieces with a purpose, a life, and a soul. She continued designing the entire time she was alive. She collaborated with other artists to make these beautiful prints, innovated this really cool felt wallpaper. She collaborated also with the Jolne factory. Also, there's this serving plate, this table. This is one of my favorite teapot. This chair. This inkwell is one of her earlier works, but I think it's really cool. Also, she started as a painter. I hope you enjoyed learning about her.